God's word upon which we base our message this day is recorded for us in the Old Testament lesson from 2 Kings, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12, also in connection with the gospel appointed for today from Mark 9, verses 2 through 9. Both uh, have been read, and we've heard the words read just a few moments ago. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. You know, everybody loves a mountaintop experience, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. This is the last weekend of Epiphany, and we're going to be focusing on that one last revealing of Christ as the one who came for all people before we get into the next season of the church year. We're going to be focusing on the story called the Transfiguration, of how Christ was transformed or he was transfigured before Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop. Oh, it really was a mountaintop experience for them. In order to understand what is going on, we're going to need to take a look at the Old Testament lesson and have a little bit of a uh, Bible study this morning. We need to turn to the Old Testament lesson, 2 Kings, uh, which is our text today, which we heard read. It's the first lesson for this weekend. And it tells about a prophet by the name of Elijah. And while Christians are observing and celebrating Easter which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the festival of all festivals of the Christian church. So also many Jewish people observe another festival called Passover. And that particular festival reminds them or remembers the deliverance of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And back in the book of Exodus, uh, the children of Israel are told to remember what happened what happened when they were released from slavery, they celebrate it with a special meal, similar to the one that was eaten on the evening before God actually passed over their houses and marked them with the blood of a sacrificed lamb, as we see in the picture today. And all of this does come from that book of Exodus, and Jewish people today observe it. But there's a tradition in this particular meal, attached to this, this meal. There's a mysterious cup, a mysterious cup of wine that is poured out and placed on the table, but no one drinks it. This cup is waiting for Elijah. Elijah. Why is it Elijah? For one thing, Elijah is, uh, is really almost unique in the Hebrew scriptures as being a guest who could actually appear but not as a ghost. Elijah is one of two characters in the pages of the Old Testament who actually left this world without dying. And so we're told that Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind uh, with uh, fiery chariots. That's what we heard in 2 Kings today in our reading. And there's Elisha in our picture looking at Elijah being taken to heaven in a fiery chariot. The reason to believe that Elijah would return is that the ancient prophet Malachi prophesied, wrote that God will send Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. So before Jesus comes, Elijah is going to, going to come. Before Jesus does what he's supposed to do, he's going to come. So in preparation for the coming of the Messiah, the Israelites, Jewish people, anticipate Elijah's return. Only, only one man appeared to leave the world in a similar way before Elijah, and only one afterwards. Prior to all of this, there was a man by the name of Enoch. Maybe you remember Enoch in your Old Testament Bible study. We read in the book of Genesis about Enoch. We read, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. So it was then that Elijah did not die and his part in God's story was not finished yet. While the rest of history unfolded and the prophets came and, and went, Elijah was not forgotten because then in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, we read these words. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Now, while Elijah was waiting in the wings, so to speak, another man of God comes on the scene, and this man was born of a woman named Elizabeth, and also his father was Zechariah. Elizabeth, we are told, was very old when she gave birth to this man, and he grew up and he went out to the desert, and he would call people to repent, repent of their sins, because the kingdom of God was coming. And so then one day when Jesus appears, this man says and points to him and says, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This man is dressed in camel's hair and leather, and that costume was the unmistakable costume of Elijah. By now you know who I'm talking about. It's John the Baptist. And people asked him, are you Elijah? Remember, they went up to him and said, are you Elijah? He said, no. And he continued to speak and preach as a prophet and ended up being put to death. We know by Herod, his head was put on a platter. John the Baptist, who we call the forerunner of Jesus, was crying out to the people, helping them to prepare to get ready because Jesus, who is the true author of life, was visiting our world. And so Jesus comes. He enters the world, as the prophets had said, born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus said, that one, speaking of John the Baptist, if you are prepared to accept it, that one is Elijah who is to come. Now, this was not really the Elijah that was still to appear, but John's role was like that of Elijah in that he would announce the arrival of the King and the Lord. And our Savior, who was dressed in humanity, took on human flesh and humbled himself. And finally, the waiting was over. On a mountain, we get to our gospel now today, we see Peter, James, and John with Jesus. And here comes Moses, the lawgiver of old, Moses is the one who led his people out of slavery. He was the guide. He was a mediator for the people. Now we see Elijah also. And at last, the prophet of old, the one who would be sent before the final chapter of God's glory is on the scene. And we have a picture here, as we did even at the beginning, where we see Peter, James, and John uh, below Jesus. And we see Moses and Elijah on either side of Jesus, who is illuminated and glowing. Now, then we see the most important thing happen. Let's read these words from our, for our, from our gospel lesson. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. Now, if the entrance of Moses and Elijah was important, then their leaving or their exit was even more important. For their departure meant that the law is over and prophecy is past, and truly God is going to do a new thing. He's going to make all things new in the person of Jesus Christ. The others were only temporary. As for the prophecies, said St. Paul, they will pass away. So with Elijah, we see all of that passing away. So we are left on the mountain where Jesus has now been transfigured or transformed. And it was a wonderful experience for Peter, James, and John. They got to see Moses and Elijah. They get to see Jesus. They see Jesus, they see him, and they come to the realization that he is who he is supposed to be, the very son of God that he is the Son of God who came to take the sins of the world away. And so Jesus is the one that God promised to come for all people. The waiting was over now. And thank God, the Savior came. It was such a wonderful experience that Peter, of course, you know, he's always the first one to speak up. He says, I'd like to build some shelters. I'd like to build a tent so that we could stay so that we could bask 
in this moment. And in a similar way, we too would like to stay with Jesus on the mountaintop. But you see, it was a, a time, it was time for them to go and to follow Jesus down the mountain, down into the valley to see what he really came to do. That Jesus would fulfill the prophecies, that he would go and he would suffer much, that he would be rejected, that he would be put to death on the cross to forgive the sins of all people. And so the suffering, the death, and resurrection, resur resurrection of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all that God had promised in the Old Testament. And Jesus is the one, and the only one, that would be the sacrifice to pay the price to forgive our sins and give us heaven. And because, because the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the focus, the 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 primary focus of the Christian faith. Everything about the Christian faith is centered around that story about Jesus. Because that is the central part of our faith, the church developed a tradition that helps us to spend time to review the steps of our Savior as he made his way to the cross and then to the tomb. This tradition is called Lent. It's, a, it's designed to be a 40-day period of time for reflection and for renewal of our Christian faith. It comes from the fact that Jesus went to the wilderness and was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Additional midweek services are held beginning with Ash Wednesday, which actually starts this Wednesday in that 40-day period, extra services, extra times when the sacrament of the altar is going to be offered to strengthen us and to nourish us during this season. And then Lent culminates in the week before Easter, which is called Holy Week. During that week, we follow Jesus to the upper room where we see that he institutes the sacrament of the altar for us and tells us to do this often. And then we follow him to the Garden of Gethsemane where he is taken into custody, custody by the Roman guards. And we follow him to Calvary's holy mountain and we stand there and we see him dying and suffering and we ponder, we ponder his death for us. And through the years, Sad to say, attendance and participation in midweek Lenten services have fallen by the wayside. Lent may also seem to be a downer for some because it does center on suffering and death of our Savior. And yet, like the disciples, we would like to stay on the mountain and not go down to the Valley of the Cross. In many ways, we are not unlike those disciples because Jesus went to the garden with, uh, with his disciples. He went there to pray. But the disciples kept falling asleep, you'll remember. And Jesus confronts them. And he goes to them and he asks them, could you not watch? Could you not stay awake? Could you not stay awake and pray with me just for one hour? Our faith grows when we realize that our Savior gave up his life for us because of his great love for us. It is our nature to want to focus on the mountaintop experience. But we will never grow in discipleship until we realize the cost that Jesus paid so that we could be forgiven and live forever with him. Perhaps this is a good time as we approach Lent for each one of us to take time to ask God's Holy Spirit to help us make a commitment to observe the Lenten season. Oh, we don't get any extra points by coming on Wednesdays. We don't get any extra points with God. God's not going to love us more because we come to Lent or give up something for Lent. But it is a good practice that connects us with the very Word of God and the story of how God fulfilled what he said he would do in Jesus Christ. So we pray that God would help us to commit ourselves to observing that Lenten season, to come and to hear, to receive the sacrament more often, 
during these Wednesday season services and during Holy Week. My friends, just as the disciples, we come down from the mountain. We need to come down from the mountain so that we can see once again how Jesus suffered and died for me and for you. All eyes need to be on Jesus. May we only see Jesus and his suffering and death for sinners this Lenten season. As a child, I learned many, many Lenten hymns that have become so very important to me and actually are part of my prayer life. One of my favorite hymns is Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. How moving that hymn is and how succinct it is to speak about what Lent is all about. Let's use it as a prayer as we come down from the mountain and as we go to the cross. Will you pray it with me today? Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. With your spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I in love and faith May the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death that I may not perish. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.